Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. Today's episode is gonna be on, uh, it's, it's completely different. I have never done this before, so, uh, if you like this, sorry, I moved away from the microphone for a bit, but, uh, if you like this idea, um, then comment down below whether you like this and basically it's uh, me explaining the possible scenarios of like winter and you can see this one is titled what winter will the northeast or what will winter look like for the northeast if the if a la nina pattern forms and i could have one like what will the winter look like if a neutral pattern forms what will the winter look like if an el nino pattern forms and i could do this for different regions like the south the midwest the West, you know, I mean, it's it's endless possibilities with this, not endless, but there's several possibilities I could do, so uh, depending on how much you like this, I may, you know, do more, so I came up upon this idea kind of on my head <laughs> when I was thinking to myself, and I was like, yeah, this sounds like a good idea, so uh, hopefully you would approve, and uh, you could show your approval by subscribing to this channel, all you gotta do is hit the subscribe button, it's red if you're not subscribed, once you click on it, it means you are subscribed so thank you so much for doing that uh, if you were if you're gonna subscribe uh, it really means a lot so uh, thank you for doing that if you're gonna do it <laughs> so uh, first off if you don't even know what an El Nino or a La Nina is and I just wanna first let's just look at why I say uh, La Nina because there's a possibility of a La Nina you could see cup I mean not even couple one model is showing a La Nina uh, is this unlikely yes uh, uh, a La Nina will form um, at this point it seems more a weak El Nino or possibly a neutral though you could see it doesn't look as if there will be a La Nina unfortunately or fortunately uh, depending on what it's gonna play out and where you live but you could see here I mean here's the raw data here are the models you could see climate prediction center council um, that's one of the models DYN average and you could see statistical average and that basically they all show borderline neutral and weak El Nino all the way through winter and spring so um, predict a weak El Nino again you can see right here to continue but uh, if you you know if you don't even know what an El Nino or La Nina is what in the world is this um so el nino characterized by a positive o and i and if you're wondering what the o and i stands for o and i is defined by a three month period where the temperature in the south american off the south american coast um the the western coast is equal to or greater than 0 0.5 so if you look at these models Anything that's above this is classified as an El Nino. That's what some of the models are showing. Some of the models are showing below. And you can see that uh, a La Nina is characterized by uh, a negative ONI or three month period that is equal, less than or equal to negative 0.5 Celsius. So uh, this isn't a La Nina right here. A La Nina would be down here. And between this 0.5 El Nino and 0.5 positive, which is an El Nino, is the neutral zone, and sometimes that does happen. And I think this year, you know, uh, we may see this. Uh, and you can see that at least five consecutive overlapping three-month seasons, and uh, gives you a little bit more information, which isn't really important at this point. Uh, so uh, if we look at the, uh, this is basically um, where the models are, where sorry, where the waters are. <clears throat> Where the water, where the waters are off the South American coast, and this is where it is, the El Nino. This is where they form. You can see there's different regions: the Nino four region, Nino three point four region, Nino three region. Seems a little bit ridiculous, but this actually makes sense, and it matters a lot because if it's cooler on, uh, say, you know. We could have an El Nino, warmer waters, that's what it is, uh, 0 0.5 or greater, like I explained. And, uh, you know, I'm just using an example. This In this case, we're predicting a scenario of a La Nina. So, if a La Nina does happen, which is unlikely to, um, it would be cooler waters here, um, you know, all throughout. But if, say, if it was an El Nino and it's warmer waters, and this region, and this region were cooler, that's a Modoki or a Modokai El Nino, which is even different from a weak El Nino, it's a little bit different. So there's a lot of variability to it, and that's why these regions are formed in the first place, the Nino 4, Nino 3.4, Nino 3, Nino 1 plus 2. Um, so, uh, and if you look at the, if you type in ENSO Outlook, um, you'll see, also I apologize if I kept saying ENCO, I always say that on accident instead of ENSO. But uh, if you look at uh, the ENSO outlook, the ENSO outlook, it also uh, shows you the 
anomalies of the weekly anomalies that occurred or you know from the past week what are the departures from average across each individual region which gives you an idea you know whether that Madokai or an El Nino or a La Nina or a neutral whatever it may be whether or not it's forming at that specific time so uh, you can see very interesting stuff hopefully I give you a background on what this is it's really not that hard it's um, you know I may I mean the only reason you would understand this is because of my explanation and it's completely understandable but I mean, just read it for yourself and you'll be quickly to understand it, I, I guarantee you. And if we were to look at, uh, so okay, now we're assuming that it would be a La Nina pattern for the Northeast, which, again, I don't think this would happen, but, um, I, you know, it's possible that it may. And you can see that uh, a this is a La Nina and we, the characteristics are all marked here. You can see variable Pacific density, yeah, you know, a lot of things going on here. Uh, blocking high pressure here across Alaska, the Gulf of Alaska, you know, a bunch of things going on. But the most important thing is uh, to look at the Northeast region, which, you know, this is a, a small map or a small or large map, and it's a small area. You can, you can barely see the Northeast. But what they're showing is basically that... <clears throat> is basically that they're uh, demonstrating that the cold air can get down to especially the eastern midwestern parts of the country when the jet stream dips and meets with the uh, Pacific or subtropical or tropical jet stream subtropical jet stream other known wise as and you can see cold air sometimes spills this is just marked over here but sometimes it spills way into the northeast and into the midwest and this overlaps with the Pacific jet stream that is also carrying very wet and warm uh, conditions, you know, a possible disturbance, a system, whatever it may be, it's uh, it's enough to uh, get through and, po po you know, possibly get off the coast or combine with an Alberta clipper and form into a nor'easter. And uh, you could see that if they obviously when a nor'easter and you could see and uh, I'm getting lost here. And what I meant to say is that when a nor'easter develops, it would have the cold air to tap in if it was the right conditions when the jet stream dipped. And also, you know, it obviously isn't hard, uh, easy to make a nor'easter, but it also, um, you know, th theoretically speaking, it isn't easy. There's a lot of circumstances that need to come together. But if you get one, this is what it's probably going to be in a La Nina winter. You get uh, nor'easters that tap into the cold, have a lot of warmer uh, and wet and moisture and air, and they just produce lots of snow. So during the La Nina, it looks fairly, uh, fairly chilly for the northeast and fairly snowy. Now the next couple of slides that I'll show you are gonna be anomalies, but, uh, and those aren't showing the snowfall, they're just showing the cold, but in terms of snowfall, if there was a La Nina across the northeast, yes, you would have above average snow. Um, another quick uh, image of a La Nina, you could see colder, wetter, warmer, but then that jet stream, that fine line between that wet, warmer, and colder could produce those monster snowstorms. Um, obviously there will be times where it's warmer and colder, but uh, those snowstorms can be killer, I mean, ridiculous uh, in strength. And you can see that uh, this is um, an anomaly. I basically, you know, I, I had to do this. I was thinking of finishing off the video there just, you know, but then I'm like, nah, it's not fulfilling enough. You know, I do what I always do on my videos, which is make these anomaly graphs that everybody seems to find pretty cool according to the comment section so and the feedback that i'm getting so uh if we look at this we could see that there is uh, a, a a chilly deviance or yeah basically a uh, in terms of from average uh, not ridiculous notice how it's only negative uh 1.2 which isn't a whole lot but again it's over the span of several years which is why it makes it such a big difference when there is such a big anomaly that they in decrease the increment scale. Um, you could see that the December through February of this was actually what I'm looking at right now. Um, darn it, I forgot what it was. I think this was because I did I separated them into strong, weak, and moderate La Ninas. Uh, and I don't remember if this was. Uh, let me try. I don't remember what this was exactly. I have a feeling that this is. Uh, this was, uh, well, I'll check and tell you guys in just a minute. Hold on. Okay, guys, so uh, I realized that this was a weak La Nina. This is what a typical weak La Nina looks like in terms of averages from temperatures. You could see uh, during these winters, it was a little bit warmer across the northeast. But but um, it's it's been variable. I mean, there's been La Ninas in here that have been producing uh, chilly, very chilly conditions across the 
uh, northeast, you know, that produce really cold temperatures, and there's been La Nina's where, which produce really warm temperatures, and, uh, and uh, you know, obviously, I guess the warmth overcame the cold in these average, when you average all these years out, but also if you look at uh, the moderate La Nina, it's not as, uh, you know, alarming, I guess, but uh, it's it's a little bit uh, more drastic because it's negative three in anomaly. You can see a little bit cooler across the northeast right here, not as warm. This is a moderate La Nina, and this is a strong La Nina. You can see even more different. I mean, the ocean's all warm here, or cold, the Pacific, but then it's warmer across uh, the colder, or I should say, it's warmer across the south and possibly northeast, but I mean, we just need one of these shots to come in and it could be a cold and snowy winter. But uh, this is not looking as if this year will be a La Nina. So, uh, you know, I guess this, and this is all of them averaged out. Uh, it's just a typical La Nina, and you can see it's it's different than the first ones I showed you. So, typical La Nina based on historical raw data, this is what it looks like. Uh, cold and uh, possibly snowy. So, that's what it is. But this is not the forecast for this year as uh, it's not going to be a La Nina this year. At, at least it seems like it. So, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Consider subscribing. Consider liking the video. And I'll catch you guys in the next episode. See ya. Bye.